So we know working capital is current assets minus current liabilities, but in order to fully understand how different transactions impact working capital or net investment in working capital, we'll take a look at the balance sheet of a company, modern equipment company from start, from scratch. So the first transaction that the company will have is that the investors will invest some money in, into the company. And let's say the investors invest $1,000. So at this point, the accounting entry would be cash at bank debit $1,000 and share capital credit $1,000. So how do we reflect that in the balance sheet? We will have cash at bank of $1,000 and share capital of $1,000 as well. So as you can see, you know the accounting equation, your assets equal your total equity and liabilities. However, what you notice is your investment in working capital or your net working capital after this first transaction is $1,000. So this is just a calculation of net, net working capital, total current assets minus total current liabilities. And you see that our net working capital at this point is $1,000. So investments, or funding by owners or even uh, loan providers impacts your working capital because it changes your cash at bank balance. So point to remember, this is the first transaction and we call it transaction A that took place on the 1st of March, 2021. Now the second transaction is that the company decides to invest the cash and buy some furniture and fixtures, right? So at this point, the accounting entry would be you will have your furniture and fixtures account debit and your cash at bank account credit with let's say $700. Let's say they buy furniture and fixture of $700. So how do you reflect that in your balance sheet? Now your furniture and fixture account would be increased by $700, but your cash at bank would be credit and that means a decrease in balance. So now the balance would only be $300. And on the other side, there's no change in the share capital. So let me actually drag it all the way till the end because usually share capital does not change. And in our example, we will not be changing uh, share capital. And you will see the check not showing zero anymore, but that's not a problem because we still have to enter all the transactions that take place. So second transaction, transaction B, results in an increase in furniture and fixture and a reduction in cash and bank which also means a reduction in your net working capital, right? So as soon as you use the cash to invest in long-term assets, which are not part of your working capital, your working, working capital changes. And a key point to remember is if an accounting entry impacts only your current assets and current liabilities, then your working capital will not change. But if an accounting entry has one side of the entry impacting your working capital, or current assets or current liabilities, but the other element is either impacting your non-current assets or your equity or your non-current liabilities, then that transaction would change your net investment in working capital, okay? We will see that. Let's move on and let's look at transaction C. And what now happens is that the company is able to buy three pieces of equipment at $100 each However, they are not required to pay yet. The supplier has offered them a credit of 30 days. So the accounting entry at this point would be your inventory would be debit by $300 and your accounts payable or trade payable will also be credited by $300. So this is your accounting entry at this point. And by the way, whatever you see highlighted as light blue, are the transactions where you see an impact in the working capital. So here now your furniture and fixture at this point on the 10th of April does not change. Your cash at bank also does not change because you don't have to pay anything yet. However, your in inventory increases by $300 because the company bought three pieces of equipment at hundred each. So this increases your inventory. And on the other side, your trade payables also increase by 300 because this amount is now payable in 30 days to the supplier. As you can see, at this, as this entry impacts both current assets and current liabilities only, your net investment in working capital does not change at all at this point. The next transaction is that the company is able to sell those three pieces of equipment 
to a customer and the customer is offered 45 days of credit in this case okay the accounting entry at this point actually there will be two accounting entries one to record the sales and trade receivable and the other one to record the cost of sales and change in inventory right now in this case the selling price is higher because the company wants to make a profit so the company sold the items for 150 each right so each item was sold for 150 times 3 is 450 dollars on the other hand you know it costs the company only 100 dollars each so the change in inventory is 300 or um, so the company records cost of sales cost of sales debit and inventory credit by 300 dollars right so how do we reflect that in this um, balance sheet again on the 15th of april five days after the inventory was purchased there's no change in furniture and fixture there's still no change in the cash at bank because the company does not have to pay or receive anything yet trade receivable increases by 450 inventory decreases by 300 because the inventory is now sold and you can actually see that here in the accounting entry as well inventory is credited by 300 so this becomes zero however now the company has made profit right so the cost of these pieces was 300 dollars but they have sold it for 450 so the company has made a profit of 150 so if we had a view of the income statement of the company we would now see a profit of 150 dollars and profit is reflected in the balance sheet under accumulated profits or accumulated losses which is a part of total equity so we will add that 150 dollars to accumulated profits which increases your equity and your trade payable will still remain at $300 because you have not settled this amount yet so you see as the company makes profit on this transaction the net investment in working capital also increases by that amount the profit of $150 results in an increase in net working capital we can also start calculating the number of days now in order to calculate the cash conversion cycle so in our example the company purchased inventory on 10th of April and on 15th of April it was able to sell so in this particular case the time it took the company to sell the inventory was five days or in other words the inventory period for the company is five days and you can also calculate this by just taking a difference of the two dates in Excel and just change the format to number and it shows you that it took five days for the company to sell inventory next transaction is the company should not forget that the supplier offered them a credit of 30 days so they bought inventory on the 10th of april and when in 30 days and you can again check it here on the 10th of may which is 30 days from the date the inventory was purchased the amount is due for payment right and the transaction accounting entry for this transaction would be trade payable debit and bank cash at bank credit with three hundred dollars okay so again if you look at the balance sheet now the balance sheet on the 10th of may looks like this your cash and bank would be reduced by three hundred dollars because the company has to settle so it becomes zero no change in accounts receivable trade receivable and your inventory is still zero no change in profit for the year so far however your trade payable will now be reduced to zero okay and you see this has no impact on your networking capital because again all of this transaction is really only impacting your current assets and current liabilities and finally in 45 days you can check uh, 30th of May is 45 days from the day the sale was made now it's important you will not look at the day the inventory was purchased but actually the sale was made on 15th of April that's the day from when the company would start counting the number of days and 30th of May is 45 days from 15th of April and that's when the amount is due to the company the customer is required to settle the amount so at this point the, uh, the accounting entry in the company's books would be cash at bank or bank would be debit and trade receivable will be credit by $450 so we can show that we can reflect that quite simply 
this $450 of trade receivable will become zero and the company will receive cash of $450. And your furniture and fixture will not change. By the way, we are only looking at entries or transactions that impact working capital. We're ignoring some of the other transactions that the company might um, have, such as recording the depreciation on these items. We are just ignoring them for now. So that's why your furniture and fixture balance remains at $700. Anyway, on the liability and equity side, there's no change in the profit still because there was only one transaction so far of sale and that resulted in the profit of 150. Similarly, trade payable is already settled. There is no transaction, so that would be zero. So again, you see in this case, there's no change in the net investment in working capital, but the $300 that the company started with after buying the furniture, this was the, uh, let's say the working capital that the company started with after buying furniture. As a result of this whole cycle of buying inventory and selling it on credit and finally finally collecting the money the net, net investment in working capital has now increased to 450 which is really driven by the profit that the company has made uh, or the value that the company has added now this example gives us a very good idea for calculating cash conversion cycle and cash conversion cycle can be explained as the time it takes a company to invest in inventory, invest the cash in inventory, and then recover that cash in the form of settlement from customers. The formula for calculating cash conversion cycle or CCC in days is inventory conversion period plus receivables conversion period minus payables conversion period. Also, you can refer to inventory conversion period as days inventory outstanding plus um, days sales outstanding minus days payable outstanding. So if we look at our example, we if you recall on the 10th of April, the company purchased inventory, right? But it was able to sell it within five days on the 15th of April. So for our calculation, the inventory conversion period is five days. The receivables conversion period, on the other hand, is 45 days. If you recall, this is the number of days of credit that was allowed to the customer by the company. And we also did a calculation here on 30th of May. So receivables conversion period is 45 days. And payables conversion period reflects the time that the company is given or offered by the supplier or vendor to settle its obligations. And in this case, we know that the settlement period was 30 days. So the formula for CCC is your days inventory outstanding plus days sales outstanding minus your days payable outstanding. And that is 20 days in this case. And I kept the example very simple to demonstrate that fact. If you look at this example, after the initial investment and um, utilizing the initial cash by the company to buy furniture, the company had $300 to invest in working capital, right? But the company did not actually pay the money until the 10th of May, right? The company purchased inventory on credit on the 10th of April. Then on 15th of April, it sold on credit, but it only had to pay the amount and the money left the company on the 10th of May. But the money was back in the company on the 30th of May. So really between 10th May and 30th May, there is a gap of 20 days, which is reflected in our calculation here as well. CCC is 20 days. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, make sure you subscribe. And if you like the information shared in this video, please do not forget to click like. I would really appreciate that. Thank you and have a great day.